And so when you think about teaching now, what is it that you like about it? It's still that, that, that great opportunity to share, mm -hmm. share your, your knowledge, share your interests, share your passion. Uh, I find that to be the main motivator. Um, the, the enjoyment of, of sharing ideas and certainly also seeing uh, the way uh, university students' ideas about the world are shaped and, and transformed. It is one of those rare vocations where you can actually influence and change people and you can see the result. Mm. Um, you know, whether that student, you only have them for the three years or they, they do a fourth year honours with you or they move on to postgraduate study, um, that, that transformation, that's, that's really one of the more pleasing things. Are there any moments that kind of stand out for you in your, in your memory in terms of working with students or an individual student, that kind of transformation feeling? The, I mean, there's certainly one, yeah. one experience where I was given the opportunity to do a, a teaching and learning yeah. fellowship. So I was, uh, for one year, I was, I was given the opportunity to develop a teaching and learning project. And so what I did was design a, a new course and taught mm -hmm. it and only it. Um, for a year and that that was a wonderful wonderful experience because one just had the time and um, it's those opportunities uh, around the, the finding the time to do mm -hmm. teaching well mm -hmm. um, I think you know the, the, the flip side to that question <laughs> is that I mean the, the things that have made teaching much more difficult mm -hmm. um, since I first began has simply been mm -hmm. the staff student ratio Mm. Um, you know, when I first started, mm. we used to hold our tutorials, and again, Australian tutorials are not like the Ox Oxbridge <laughs> system. You know, we had yeah. um, six to eight students, okay. and yeah. we'd we'd conduct the tutorial in our office. Mm. So the students were surrounded yeah. by our books. They mm. saw mm. us as working historians, and they saw what a w yeah. historian did. That environment was fantastic. Mm. Then within a few years, we were told that we had to increase the, the staff student ratio to 12, or we couldn't fit the 12 students mm. in our rooms anymore. So we moved to teaching spaces. Mm. Uh, last year, or the year before, uh, we had to move all teaching out of the building that the department mm. was in because we'd got to essentially 20 to 25 students and occupational health and safety simply said these rooms were now too small. Um, and so that's been the single biggest mm. transformation, I think, um, in a negative sense, that, that I see it in colleagues. I see them, um, I see their passion being challenged every day simply by the sheer volume of, of students. And I think there are, you know, there, there, well, there's, there's plenty of evidence to show that um, if you teach in a, in a small group environment, mm. six to eight students, mm. the outcomes for everyone, including the teacher, are going to be better than if it was 25. And, you know, the strategies that, that academics employ to teach mm. six to eight are not the same yeah. as when they're teaching 25, mm. but they, a lot of academics haven't moved through that transition that essentially they're taught teaching a large group, not a small group. Do you think you can get over that in some ways, or, given that the ideal is six to eight? Well, I, I, th I think in my, my current yeah. role as, a, as an associate mm. dean, dealing with yeah. teaching, I, I say that to my colleagues every day, <laughs> that you know, mm. if we think about this more creatively, there are ways to get around it. And, and there are ways to improve mm. it, but mm. the reality is, mm it's never going to be as good as having six to eight students. Uh, it just simply, simply will never be.